A very good afternoon and Jai Hind, dear children. Today we'll be discussing the very second chapter of this beautiful book, Here Comes the Sun. Uh, the name of the chapter is Priceless Life and it has been written by a very young writer named Abha Seth. Okay, uh, she is a sunbeam. She's from our own uh, group of institutions of sunbeam. She, she's from uh, Indra Nagar. Okay, now before I start with her uh, beautiful write-up, let me <clears throat> tell you a little bit about this pretty little girl, Abha Seth. She was born on 22nd May 2008 in Varanasi. Her father is a subdivisional officer for the, for the Uttar Pradesh Power Corporation and her mother is an excellent homemaker. Um, she uh, has been growing up as an avid reader. She never liked rereading stories except for one that uh, that has become her favorite, that is The Eyes Have It by Ruskin Bond. I know this story is beautiful. Howsoever, how many times, I mean, uh, you can simply go through it innumerable number of times. It's my favorite also. Well, uh, apart from reading and writing, she loves traveling, singing, and watching movies too. Uh, she loves Padmavat. Mohan Jodaro fascinates her a lot. She loves listening to Sufi songs as they calm her. And when it comes to food, she has a huge list of it. But then she uh, loves a lot having Chole Bhature. Okay, so that was about Abha. Now let us start with her creation. Okay. What a wonderful way of starting your creation with a, a cute little question. Grandma, what is so special about this box that you never allow me to touch? I'm fed up with hearing this question of yours. Come, let me show you what is it inside. Ria jumped with excitement at her grandmother, relenting to her curiosity. Vasundra pulled the box nearer and opened the lid. She took out some books. Ria from books. What is so special about those? Books are the richest treasure. And these mean a lot to me. Are they all storybooks? Yes. May I read one to you? So you see, children, this is a sweet little conversation between a grandma and her granddaughter. That is Vasundra and Ria. Now, since we are also celebrating this week as the Reading Mahotsav, so I think this story would uh, definitely justify its title. That is Priceless Life. Let's move on. Okay, Vasundra picked up her favorite book. The title had almost worn away, but she was able to identify the book by appearance alone. She started the story. Okay, so now, Vasundra, the grandma, is narrating a story to her sweet little granddaughter. Let's see what was the story all about. Around 150 years ago, there lived a king, Rajendra Pratap Singh, with his son Yashraj. His kingdom was known as Bridgeport. Now children, don't make fun of children whose name is Yashraj. I know there are many children by this name. It sounds so royal, isn't it? Let's see. Years passed and the king grew old. He was quite unwell and feared that his death was near. The doctors told him to hand over his responsibilities to the prince, but he did not agree. I have called you to cure me, not to tell me what to do. He snapped at them. So you see, uh, this king, he was uh, already knowing that he was, you know, he was nearing his death. All right. He was aware of that fact. 
and he wanted uh, to uh, just give away the responsibilities to the friends all right he uh, he was he was under medication and uh, that willingness to give away the responsibilities was just an advice by the doctors okay initially he did not want he wanted to live it seemed like that all right one day a guest who was visiting the king began to complain about the prince rajendra your son is quite annoying he doesn't let me rest even for a moment so now this guest of him uh, he's complaining about yashraj that is uh, rajin pratap singh's son the prince had no friends he had spent his whole childhood in the palace telling everyone absurd tales and disturbing them while they worked obviously no one argued with him he was after all the prince with the books okay so now generally what happens you see uh, i would just give you a generalized opinion here because a family which has got single child they do have this kind of tendency especially during you know the holidays when you have no friends to talk to nobody to play with then what happens what will that child do that child will definitely seek for someone to whom he or she can share isn't it and then what happens the child looks for uh, mama or you know papa or might be the caretakers who are there or might be the helpers when they come you know they keep on moving in and around them especially the young ones isn't it so now this case was same with yashraj okay uh, so children please don't feel uh, get, don't get hurt about this general opinion because this is just a generalized opinion and it may vary let's see uh, yashraj only had one friend and who was it ramu his caretaker so you see as i told you the caretakers they are the fast friends of such people such children who are you know uh, who are at the uh, disposal of the caretakers when your parents are working both the parents so ramu left the prince as his own child they shared a close bond a close bond you know a firm bond ramu believed yashraj's wild tales of escapes from demons and thought he was a genius in working out unsolvable mysteries so this ramu the caretaker is uh, actually you know uh, very much appreciating towards yashraj because he was the one who knew all ins and outs of yashraj let's see one day ramu had come to the prince for help his face pale what happened dada okay so he is asking let's see all right help me yash my daughter is missing said ramu and burst into tears so it seems as if ramu is you know uh, giving a kind of a work to uh, yashraj don't worry i will help you find her the prince said meanwhile the king came to inform yashraj that he was leaving the kingdom to meet someone he saw ramu's condition and asked him what was wrong what was wrong nothing sir nothing sir i'm just feeling unwell so now what happens uh, the king asked do you need leave that means uh, king was being a little bit you know uh, caring towards ram and he inquired whether he was feeling well or not no sir i'll be all right the king left with his entourage giving the prince a chance to leave the palace but it struck yashraj that in spite of having known ramu for so long he had never actually seen his daughter so he asked ramu by the way how will i know your daughter if i see her so you see uh, yashraj has never seen ramu's daughter 
and now that when Ramu has told Yashraj that uh, his daughter is missing, so how would he decipher Where, uh, regarding, uh, you know, because one, uh, like, when you are not aware of the fact of uh, the existence of someone's daughter, you've never seen her. And one fine morning, you get to know that uh, the girl is missing. So what will happen? You will, you know, you will find it very weird. But then definitely you'll ask for some kind of, uh, say, some kind of um, relevance regarding the existence of her daughter, of his daughter, right? So for that, what happened? You will ask for the photograph, isn't it? So same happened with Ramu and Yashraj. So now Yashraj is asking for a photograph from Ramu so that supposing if Yashraj comes across a girl who is, you know, similar to that photograph, he would decipher that girl to be Ramu's daughter, isn't it? So that was a very uh, smart thinking, I would say, of Yashraj. Let's move ahead. She's 13. This is her portrait, said Ramu. Yashraj left, asking Ramu not to tell anyone he was born. Yashraj was outside the palace for the very first time in his life. He discovered that life was not as idyllic outside as it was inside the palace. So uh, we can say at this point, you know, children, that when a child, when a prince rather, I won't say child, when a prince is uh, within the uh, within the royal uh, boundaries, when the child is not let outside that uh, royalty, is always under the luxuries, is fed with luxuries, I would say, and has never been outside to get the feel of the reality. So what happens then? If the child is let out, that child will be uh, totally dumbstruck. Because till then, here in this story, in Abha's story, Yashraj never stepped out of his palace at all. So this was the first time that he was going for an errand. And what was that errand? Uh, it was to find out Ramu's daughter who was 13 years old, a teenager, right? So uh, this was the first time and Yashraj found the world outside the palace to be very different, okay? And he was, I would say he was very happy and uh, he saw religious factions, struggles for supremacy, political groups jostling for him influence so these things were not sensed by him when he was within those boundaries of his palace you know those royal boundaries so he wasn't at all aware of that he was never he never felt that people would you know fight for supremacy he never sensed uh, those defections in the society on the basis of caste, creed, religion, race, genders. So he wasn't at all aware of such things. But when he came out of his palace, he uh, just was, uh, I won't say he was welcomed, but then he came to know the actual reality of life. Okay. All right, now aware of these problems, Yashraj made up his mind to set things right. So now he could get the feel of his own responsibilities of being a prince, a person who would take over very soon everything, all the royal responsibilities. Okay, meanwhile, without either the king or the prince, there was tension in the palace. And let's see what was the tension like. Where is the prince? Asked one of the servants. So you see, this uh, prince, Yashraj, very stealthily, just came out of the palace without even notifying anybody. So this was what Yashraj did. 
he did not even uh, tell his parents. So Rajendra Pratap, the king, was not knowing of Yashraj's whereabouts. I don't know. He did not tell me, said Ramu. So now Ramu had to lie. Why? Because uh, Yashraj shared a very beautiful bond with this caretaker, Ramu. Okay. And Ramu uh, had sent, I won't say Ramu had sent. It was Yashraj who felt the need to, you know, step out of the palace to find Ramu's only daughter. Okay. So uh, he had to tell this white lie. Men were sent in search, but they couldn't find them. Soon Yashraj had spent all the money he had taken with himself, but he still hadn't found Ramu's daughter. So he returned to the palace. News of his return spread. So now when he stepped back, when he returned back into the palace, uh, his return spread like a wildfire. Okay. People gathered in front of the palace and asked questions, but Yashraj had no time for them because he was very morose. He was very glum. He was sad that he could not find Ramu's daughter, the only daughter. But Ramu too rushed to the palace, hoping to see his daughter. Disappointed and frustrated, he scolded the prince for venturing out and putting his life in danger. However, he realized what he had done and apologized. So you see, this, I would say, this is kind of a relationship which we can find between a father and a child, right? So uh, he was also getting very much worried. And when he came to know that uh, Prince was back, but then, you know, without his daughter, so uh, it was something like his anxiousness was, uh, was having a little bit of emotions of sadness. Then there was an emotion of, I would say, uh, disappointment also because his uh, daughter was not there with Yashraj and in his heart of hearts, he might have expected to see his daughter, isn't it? So sad. And I really uh, feel very surprised to find Abha said being such a, you know, uh, a teenager, I would say, she being a teenager could sense this heaviness of emotions. Very well done, Abha. Congratulations to you for this beautiful writer. Let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I got it. The prince did too. I'm sorry. I could not find her. But now I understand why my father has kept me from the outside world. This time, I'll be back with your daughter. No, I don't want you to go through that again, said Ramu half-heartedly. Trust me, I'll bring your beloved daughter back to you. Yashraj left once more to find Ramu's daughter, but this time with armed guards. I have searched all over, except for the crime-ridden streets of Bridgepur. Let's go there. So you see, by this time, the scene is a bit different. He came back to the palace and he informed Ramu that once again, he would go. But that time, he was accompanied with few armed guards for his security. Because the very first time when he stepped outside, the palace, he was able to get the feel of the reality of the real world. All right. So uh, this time he was well equipped and he promised Ram to bring back his beautiful beloved daughter. Okay, let's see now. He had searched in Bridgeport before because it's roving 
criminal gangs would have found him an easy target. Now, however, he was not alone. So this time when he was, you know, uh, accompanied by uh, his guards, so he was carefree. He wasn't scared at all by the gangs. Hmm. Let me see. Now let us see. When he arrived there, that means he reached Bridgeport. He discovered that Ramu's daughter had been kidnapped and was tied up for human sacrifice. So, this is yet again, uh, it's kind of a dogma or would I say a ritual uh, that was actually a part of society during those days. You know, um, like there used to be animal sacrifice and at some places there used to be human sacrifice also. So this was, uh, I would say, a type of a religious custom, which in some places in our country, in, and during those, uh, I would say, during those ancient times, there was this prevalence of this practice. Although it was not, uh, you know, uh, not prevalent in all strata of the society, but yes, definitely it used to be there, uh, maybe due to, uh, say, if you have, you know, uh, if you have made some promises and then if that promise gets fulfilled, if you would have had told your own uh, deity, your own uh, Bhagwanji, as we say, as we call, that you would give this much of sacrifice or you would do that animal sacrifice or you would, uh, you know, give uh, 10 kilos of laddus and all those things. So these kind of things were very much prevalent during those times. Okay, now, suddenly uh, the king came out of a concealed chamber rushed to the prince and stopped him. Father, you, Yashraj was heartbroken. Yes, I kidnapped her for the sacrifice. But why? I want to be immortal. And for that, I have to sacrifice a girl like her. So now, this is a great twist, I would say, in the story. When Yashraj reached Okay, he found that it was none but his own father. And what was the reason? Because, you know, uh, here I would try to quote that uh, there was, there used to be such kinds of uh, thoughts, beliefs, that if you wish to be immortal, you need to give some human sacrifice. And he was aware that Ramu had a daughter. So he thought, why not just give Ramu's daughter as a part of his human sacrifice so that he remains immortal and, and uh, his son would be kept away from, you know, shouldering all these responsibilities. So that was the reason uh, behind this whole, you know, this whole plan. And uh, you see, uh, at this juncture, I would say that uh, the king had his own reasons, right? Because he never wanted his son to be, uh, to be very uh, well aware of the realities of life, the harshness of life, and uh, the prevalence of such... Uh, such uh, typical customs, rituals, the prevalence of uh, inhumanity, then, 
you know all kinds of uh, demarcations which are which were prevalent in the society during those days society was not very advanced right so uh, his father has his own, had his own reasons he always wanted his son to be uh, to be born you know to be uh, always uh, getting adapted to the luxuries he never thought that at all whether his son would be able to uh, you know uh, to be able to adapt himself to the realities of life because supposing once if the king dies then everything would be taken care of by the prince thereby the prince would have to uh, move out of the palace to see the condition of his uh, region isn't it condition of his kingdom so for that he had to step out and the moment he will step out he'll be aware of the realities of his kingdom his people isn't it and the king did not want that so at this point i would say that the king was very 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 possessive about his son the king was very thoughtful very caring but if we look into this context right now which uh, i am just narrating that human sacrifice that was a big no that was not at all appreciated by yashraj he was feeling very sad he was feeling very uh, penalized i would say because he came out of the palace just to find out where uh, ramu's daughter was and to his amazement to his surprise it was his own father who had kidnapped such a little girl and that too for a human sacrifice and imagine what was the reason behind that just to keep himself immortal so that he never dies so that was a great surprise for him let's see what's next again i would like to quote that abha has done a great imagination here so now yashraj he is uh, saying you should not have done this you will have to pay said yashraj gathering every ounce of his courage yashraj barked out an order to his guards arrest him now the king is saying what are you doing now you are a selfish ruler unfit to rule said the head guard now this head guard is also very much amazed so you see everybody is taken by surprise now the head guard is also saying that you are not at all fit to rule you are a selfish ruler later when the prince returned to the palace ramu was elated to see his daughter how did you find her my boy i cannot believe that you did this for me said ramu grasping yashraj's hand in thanks so now ramu was elated he was too happy to find his daughter back and that too in one piece without a single scratch isn't it isn't it so beautiful the prince was crowned and life got back to normal so that was a beautiful story wow grandma that was such an interesting story said ria her eyes wide with wonder now you know why i keep these books in a box yes grandma can i take some of them to read yes of course so that was a wonderful way to end from a little granddaughter to her own grandma and she was very uh, happy to have so you see children she was very happy to have uh, just heard this beautiful story and this short story uh, sent a message and you know what was the message any guesses well i think this is totally personal to me uh, 
the message, the only message which I received was that uh, during the olden days, ancient days, there was this prevalence of such customs of human uh, sacrifice, animal sacrifice, and uh, these were uh, these were actually these acted as a barrier for the society to flourish, isn't it? And uh, unless the king, you know, the king did one blunder that he did not allow his son to be aware of the realities, isn't it? That was one blunder which he did. And uh, the encouragement of such uh, practices done by the ruler was the second blunder which he did. So uh, I think in my opinion, such sacrifices should be discouraged. Uh, I know that still we don't have, you know, uh, human sacrifices. I, I'm not uh, aware of it, but might be, you know, uh, those tantrics and tantrics and all, they encourage these things still. But we have animal sacrifices still prevalent in our society. So we should discourage such sacrifices, first thing. And secondly, you know, uh, such sacrifices would at least send a message for uh, the survival. You know, uh, everybody has the right to live. So that is my message, which I personally perceive that everybody has the right to live. You cannot take away anybody's life just for your own selfish needs, right? So that was my message from you, uh, for you rather, and you all can have a different uh, perspective. And I really hope that you enjoyed the story. In my next class, I would bring, uh, bring back, I'll try to bring back the other two stories. Until then, happy reading, stay blessed, and keep reading and get thorough with the uh, chapters. Jai Hind.